Urban Nightmare, where the difficulty is vertical to everyone, except if you watch this guide. I'm Foxes Holo, here to give you the builds and the general path of getting you through the difficult Urban Nightmare. Let's lay the groundwork for this. We are not going to be doing any of the Briar abnormalities in this chapter. No Queen of Hatred. No Red Mercenary. You can beat them, but I'll leave links for that. Come back when you get better pages, and then do it. The Sciatir and to a lesser extent Keter are going to get a massive power boost, and we want to maximize that right now. Three goals we need to do. One, we need more survivability, and any way to recover HP and stagger is a priority. Gives more wiggle room and turns to fix the situation. Two, we need a deck that can go for a long time. Right now, everything has been separated into X for a free refresh, but that will change. This chapter has five long fights all in one act, so we're going to need a better strategy for them. Number three, have fun. No, I'm serious, we need some spice. I will provide fun decks to take the edge off because we can power bash everything and it'll get boring after a while. Library of Runa thrives on meme builds and Urban Nightmare opens the doors. You will figure out counter dice, ego, and mass attacks as you go. I will say what synergize with them and give you some combos for it. And lastly, minor spoilers for who you'll be fighting. You have been warned. Starting off with the first reception and it will be the Sweepers. These guys are weak to Pierce, so bring some Pierce teams to beat them up quickly. These guys are like zombies, so double tap them to make sure they stay down. When we get to the three named Sweepers, don't kill them quickly. With that, we've gotten the best recovery in the game, body cleanup and the haulers, both of which will keep HP topped off and staggered nice and high. Now on to attributions. Any grunt or non-speed user will have speed on immediately. There's no questions about this. From there, they have four points to play with. They can have slash, pierce, or defensive focus. First turn passives to get numbers advantage over the enemy and makes fights easier. Here are the decks we can make now. With the sweepers, they get access to garbage disposal. An insanely statted two cost page that will heal the sweeper for every hit and sometimes deal a lot of damage. This defensive sweeper will slow down the fight and protect your major hitters. Also, they will be the ones to farm emotion coins later in the fight with their multiple block dice. With the two defense ups, they will definitely be the last ones to live. Up next are Pierce Sweepers. These guys can boost garbage disposal to dish out insane damage. With other Pierce Up cards, can make it a deadly combo. On top of that, Oscar also benefits from having a good light recovery option now, with Harvest Fuel, so include that in his deck. Finally, there is Malkuth Happy Memories build. Take 3 Observe, get those costs reduced from Happy Memories. With all that strength, try to get a masked garbage disposal. If that doesn't work, you'll have Stay Calm as another option. The discard is for consistency. If you don't like Observe, you can use Wrath of Torment for more immediate power gain. With Lila, every hit and kill will restore HP to keep the combo going. From there, we're going into General Reception. With one named Sweeper, we get to fight against 7 Association Fixers. They're good for speed dice and 2 combat pages in later parts. Not doing any build for these goobers because they're gimmicks. With the second reception, we have to fight the mainstay and lead an urban nightmare, Bamboo Hat Kim. Kim is the strongest page in urban nightmare and is a better Sayo with no weaknesses. She only has three attribution slots, so we gotta make them count. She'll be constantly updated throughout each reception. Her deck will be Sayo's current deck, with the three cost card being adjustable. Right now, the standard is Sayo's Slash Up and both of the Haulers. Solidarity, Keeping in Stride, and Unstable Charge is also a solid choice for her. All floors she'll be used on. With our new Slasher, we're going to go to the Puppets next, due to their weakness to slashing. Bring Sweepers, preferably with Slashing Pages, and Kim, and you'll be good. The main farm is the Heavy Puppet. After getting them, Blunt is now even stronger. A lot of the combat pages obtained will be used for the rest of the game. You can now make mid-range blunt decks to deal with sustained damage, 
debuffing a defensive dex to weaken enemies for future clashes. Since a lot of the combat pages have a block die, they will get even stronger with defensive up. Yisad will benefit greatly from this reception. Now we're strong enough for the rest of the receptions. The next place we are going to go is the Shi Association. Bring blunt damage to stagger them even faster. Yujin is the most used key page in the game, and you have two options for her. Attribute her, or use the key page. You can also use her as a normal grunt and go whatever previous build you want due to the increased dice power. You can crank it up even further with attribution. With overbreathing, Malakuth has a lot of synergies with happy memories. This one is where you can use tailoring as her light recovery source after getting it cost reducted. It'll restore two light every scene when used. Use in boss fights, realizations, and long fights. Another playstyle is to keep her HP below 25% and take advantage of faint memories power gain and to overcome crisis light recovery effects. Now for attributing. You're going to use her extreme fatigue onto a base librarian and have that librarian with 3 times Wrath of Torment, Sayo's Battle Ready, and Oink Oink. Wait, hold on. Being down one person is bad. Why do that? Well, I'm glad you asked, Geronimo. Now, here's the answer. The other teammates are going to take Remembrance of Kazazunai to get stronger from their passing, allowing them to get the Strength gain on the second turn and take some of the aggro away. The final choice is attributing her Speed 2 to a non-Speed Die character to get three Speed Dice turn one. I recommend the grunt in the next reception and building accordingly. Can also be used on sweeper and certain agents as well. This deck should have more zero cost cards or a lower light curve to play all the actions. You will need a lot of draw to support this. Onto the trap that is Valentine. He has singular strike and most people think this is a build around card. No, you're going to have a bad time if you do that. Use it to make his consistency cards that are usually single dice a lot stronger. Finally, there is Temma the Speedster, and we'll be using a Sweeping Slashes deck. If you want to use the Breathing passive, you'll always be out of light at max emotion level. Have multiple 2 cost pages and 0 cost draw cards to keep the cycle going. Before going on to the next reception, Roland's floor will be available for upgrading. Completing it will give Roland a Game Changer Abnormality Pages, Lies, and Curiosity. With them, you're able to build a deck with only 3 cost cards. You use Emma or Eugen to buff these cards to insane power levels. Here's the deck I would use. This does make the next fights a whole lot easier. Now for Emma and the Circus. It's classified as a boss fight. Emma's key page is a more powerful puppet and combining that with additional blunt damage is really strong. Any 3 cost page used will gain an additional power to all dice, making them good for Ego pages and Roland's Lies build. They do get access to a vastly stronger mechanic later in this chapter. This reception also gives wild cards for range users. Time for the gunmen to get a better card to play, but I would use these guys as a cleanup floor now. Now for the major deck changer. The Index. These are the generic mooks and don't need to be farmed. They will auto target one person and I suggest doing the same to them since you have double the actions. After a quick fight, you get access to the boring singleton deck. Sorry, I'm not a singleton fan. It's so lame. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, they're really good for people struggling with deck building, but if you're watching this, you probably have a good idea how to build a deck by now. Here's a bunch of decks and upgrades that have been collected so far, with the Shi being the main star of the show for the next reception slash realization. If you want to make your own singleton deck, it will have Will the Prescript, one additional draw, and two light recovery for a good deck. The proxies are the best grunts available with no weaknesses and comes with a random two power boost and an additional draw. With the randomness, you might think Putting all three types of dice in is a good idea. As the great man Bruce Lee stated, he would fear a man who focused on one dice type than all. Well, probably better to focus on two to get a 67% power boost. Here's a little meme build that can only be done with the singleton. 
Since Quarry is a defensive card with insane rolls, but you have to have 7 cards in hand in order to activate the on use effect. We will use Unguard and Make Fine Silk to increase the deck size, then use Will of the Prescript or other draw effects to always proc the effect. Don't use On Guard and Make Fine Silk again unless you want to break the singleton. With that, Malkuth's Queen Bee and afterwards her realization will be available. I would do it now. It's a long battle, but you'll be fighting the previous four abnormalities and a new one. I recommend bringing the three Valentines and a Temma or a Kim with Remembrance Singleton build for this. Also make sure you bring a Patron Librarian with a Eugen Extreme Fatigue build. It will carry you through the four realizations in this chapter. All other builds are valid, but if it proves to be too difficult, use this. After the boss fight, you will get a significant power boost through Ego Pages. It will make future fights a whole lot easier. These pages do get stronger if certain people use them. Eugen and Emma benefit greatly. With Eugen restoring light on anything over 4 cost, and Emma boosting the power by a significant amount. Kim with Wing Beats will destroy anything if she doesn't min roll the repeating attack due to all the slashing she'll do. She will also boost 4th match flame by 4, if not more, depends on the number of sharpened blades and attributions used. With Snow White unlocked, Pierce Dex benefit from the Vine's Abnormality page. This will also boost the power of Hornet and Greenstem by at least 2 to 3. Which will be very useful for our next reception, W Corporation. The janitors are weak to pierce attacks, and I recommend not bringing people weak to pierce damage. Even though their key page passives are garbage, these guys are the only ones that will drop leap and have access to a unique combat page, Rip Space. Charge is a resource based mechanic that rewards you for generating it, then spending it. With it, some decks get another game plan option. Bamboo Hat Kim gets Leap and can start outspeeding people while maintaining her draw. The named Janders can go all in to Rip Space to release devastating attacks each other turn. Defensive Charge to have the highest evade dice in town. Finally, the Meme Overcharge All In, where all Nuggets will use Overcharge to try and get Numbers Advantage. With that, Eastside will have Realization. After completing it, it will unlock... Isad's egos are all single die focused, so a bunch of synergies here. Emma will have plus 3 power if he uses Regret and Solemn Lament. Pierce Dex will ramp up Gunman's damage and Melody. Bamboo Hat Kim increases Grinder to make cleanup even easier. Also, Solemn Lament and the Gunman will benefit from Singular Strike for their attacks. On to the final grunt fight for this chapter, the Smiling Faces. Jin, Mi, and Mang for their unique benefits with smoke. This currency based mechanic will increase the amount of damage dealt and when high enough increase dice power by 1. These guys will be attributed to get the most out. Emma can really take advantage of this new mechanic since he buffs deep drag and loss of senses taking care of his draw while using cheap light cards to maintain his life. You can make a super defensive deck with smoking pipe having two defensive dice and restores light. Also decks can pretend to be a smoke deck by taking puffy broom and inhale smoke to increase their damage by 30%. After that it will unlock Leticia and Hod's realization. After the realization, more egos to take advantage of. Emma gives gift. Spider Blade and Black Swan a plus 3 power boost to make sure the on hand effects connect. Bamboo Hat Kim benefits from Obsession. Even without the bleed, she still makes it insane. Finally, defensive people benefit from Shylock, bumping up the defensive dice to make sure the second die always gets the bonus damage off. Time for the boss of the chapter a Wax Angel. Yay! First timer should bring in a realized floor. Recommend Yisad to double the pages. For it, you get Imperfect Ego Philippe and some late game viable cards. Philippe is probably the best user with Singleton. I really couldn't think of any builds for him, so here it is. There is also Stigmatize, an amazing card in pure decks and helps in negative focus strategies. Very good for getting a tier 1 negative abnormality page. Now for the last fight in Urban Nightmare. Halloween and Netzak's realization. After the realization, a bunch of ego cards are now available 
Hanekta get some synergies. With that, congratulations. You are now a star in the city.